Hey everyone, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to talk about a tubular transmission or transmission by rods. If you're a mechanical engineer or a CAD enthusiast, you might have heard about this technology. But what is it exactly and how does it work? Let's find out. So in my mechanism here, we have two shafts that are in a fixed position, those yellow ones. Then we have those two plates in purple. And um, one of those rotates and rotates with it those tubes. And those tubes transmit the rotation at an angle, in this example 90 degrees, to that other disc. All right. So let's model this. I start in an empty part studio with a sketch on the front plane. Press N, normal view to that. P, hide those planes. S for my shortcuts. Take that um, polygon tool, six sided, uh, hexagon. H to make that horizontal. D to give it a dimension with uh, 66 millimeters. Then for that shaft, I want a circle here with a dimension of 36. Then one line, construction line, from the origin to one vertex and one center point circle on that line at a distance from the origin of 48. And the diameter of that is 12. All right. Exit that sketch, go to the extrude of those two regions. I'll go that direction. And take a 16 millimeter depth of that. I got one solid part. I'll rename that disk and give it some nice color. And then let's keep that sketch visible here. Go back to the extrude, take that region, remove through all. All right. And then let's make a pattern of that, a circular pattern. I got that here, of features. What's the feature? The extrude, the axis is that circular face here, six times, accept that, and we get that part. Now from that very same sketch, we will extrude that circle there as a new part, and the length of the extrusion, all right, I new body here, is 108. I'll rename that part shaft and give it again some appearance like that. And um, well, that's it for the part studio, really. A subscriber had asked me to do more um, modeling in the assembly and the context of the assembly. So I'll do this here. I start uh, an assembly. First, I'll to find a mate connector here at the origin. Then we were working in part studio three. I'll insert from the part studio three, those two parts here. All right. Now I will 
um, fasten that shaft with that mate connector to the origin. Turn that around. Okay. Then switch to the revolute mate. Take that edge and that edge. Okay. Let's have a look. Revolute, right click, animate, play. It's turning. Great. Let's insert that part studio three one more time. Here somewhere. Okay. And we need to define within the assembly the position of uh, that shaft. And we will define that from that mate connector one. So I get a origin, take that origin, go to move, move that in the Z axis, 333. And in the X axis, the same distance. And then we want the Z axis to be looking in that direction. So I will rotate around the Y axis um, at minus 90 degrees. Yeah. So now we need to fasten our shaft to that mate connector. Turn that around. Go again into the revolute. Take that edge and that one. Accept that. Okay. We press K to hide those mates, mate connectors. So now I want to model the tube within the context of our assembly number two. I go over here, create part studio in context. I need to define one origin. I take that one, accept that. And I'm in a part studio, but can see the, the context of my assembly here. I press P to hide those planes there. And I will start a sketch on that front plane. Press U to project edges from the parts of the assembly, for example, that edge of that hole is a line in my sketch plane here, and that one over here. All right. I'll pick that, make that construction geometry, that one as well. I'll take the line command, look for that midpoint here. I got it. Go over here. Go into the tangent arc. Take the line command again from that end point to over here. V makes that vertical. T makes that tangent. D gives me um, and dimension of 88 here. And we'll just make those a little longer, those lines here. Maybe that 88 is a good dimension. And the same thing down here. E to make those two equal. And 
Um, let's finish that sketch and define a plane by curve point. So I take my line here is the curve, that is the curve point. Start a sketch on that plane, press U, and use that edge here. And it is projected to my sketch plane. I go into the sweep, take that, a solid new sweep, and now the sweep path is that line, then here, here, and here. I accept that, and I will rename that cube and added the appearance some nice green here okay insert and go to assembly yes cube all right so we got that it's free to move and now let's apply a cylindrical mate of our tube with that edge, except that I'll pick here in the middle and here, except that let's apply a gear relation between those two revolute mates. Okay we might need to invert, reverse the direction of those. Go to Revolute 1, Animate. And things are looking the way we want them to be, huh? So I make a right click on the tube, go to... Um, Copy tube one, right click again, paste tube one, a couple of times, four, five, six. Actually, let, let's get those a little bit out of the way here. And start connecting those tubes. Just the way we we know. Take that. Take that. Take that. That one. That one. Yeah. Here and here. I'll pull that out a bit. Here and here. Then this one. Here, here, there, the last one, here, here, and there. Accept that. And now let's um, animate again with Revolute 1. That'll be a loop. And there you have it. A beautiful transmission creating using Onshape's Great Part and Context feature. I hope you found this tutorial helpful. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. 
And don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to my channel for more on shape tutorials. I see you in the next one.